All right, all right, all right. We're back, and it's time for another of the Patreon games. We've got a deck by Justin Clay here. This is UB Demons. Uh, as far as I know, this is his FNM fun deck, um, and um, it looks to be pretty sweet. So I hope you guys like it. If you do, give it that thumbs up, of course. And if you like the content in general, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like, and if you want to see your decks played here on the Patreon games, check the link in the description box for a below for a link to my Patreon page where you can help support the channel and support you know the games that we do. And uh, so, if you want to do that, then you can. And if you want to just you know join the community, you can join everyone else doing the the crazy things that they're doing. Much love to all of you guys. Um, I am a little get, bit curious why you didn't go with the, the fourth drowned catacombs in this deck. Uh, we've got four fetid pools. We've got um, <clears throat> three drowned catacombs, three uh, memorial to genius, and then everything else is uh, swamps and plains. So our swamps and islands. Um, pretty much straightforward. We've got a blue black deck here. We're not really really heavy on the blue. Uh, there's a lot of blue cards in the sideboard, so it makes sense that we we have enough blue to be able to you know cast those spells. Uh, but we've got some really cool uh, really cool things going on here. I'm I'm excited to see some sparring construct going on. Um, I, I've been playing around with this a little bit in a Tishar deck that I've been playing with, giving my uh, Bomat couriers and things uh, plus one one counters is just fine. Bomat just being able to swing into things with one power is absolutely ter terrific. So I have. I've been playing around with a little sparring construct. Seems good. Anyway, we've got uh, three copies of Fatal Push. We've got four copies of Aether uh, Swooper. This card's actually uh, a lot better than a lot of people give it credit for. It's just a you know a flying one-two, but uh, heaven forbid you get to start putting some counters on it or something like that. Uh, when you attack with it, you can you know use that energy that you really don't have anything else to use. Make another body, and then that body can then later be used to you know bring in something devastating, like you don't know Demon of Catastrophes or something move on over here and take a look at the two drops and all that. Uh, so the Aether Swooper, you know, we're definitely okay with sacrificing it and the little colorless servo that it makes. Um, Kaisel Freebooter, just uh, you know, kind of main board to resses and things, you know, making them have to use a removal spell on a Freebooter to get the other removal spell back. Um, you know, th that works really well. We even see this get play in Modern. So, I mean, um, Kaisel Freebooter is a really good card. And then uh, reassembling skeleton because you know we are sacrificing things. We do need to make sure that we can keep you know creatures on the battlefield, things like that. So uh, reassembling skeleton is just really, really good for you know that sort of thing. And then uh, moving on up to the three drop ravenous harpy here. Now this was one that I was not really expecting to see, uh, but ravenous harpy is not bad. It gives us another sack outlet. We can pay one, sacrifice another creature, and put a one one counter on ravenous harpy. Well, ravenous harpy is a lot like our aether swooper. Uh, it's a 1-2, but this one's going to grow all by itself. Uh, one mana sack outlet's not very bad. Plus, you can do that at instant speed, so we can dodge, you know, Faraska's Contempts, things like that. If they're going to gain a life, they're going to exile our dude. You know, our Ravenous Harpy will help keep that in, into play. And then uh, Weaponcraft Enthusiast. Weaponcraft Enthusiast is a really good card when you need to go wide. I mean, uh, I've actually put this in a couple other decks, not necessarily as three ofs, but um, I've had it, uh, you know, as a one or a two up in other decks for, you know, I just needed a couple extra bodies to help go wide. Um, I think I had a, a green black. Um, Blade um, Cultivator of Blades deck, and I was using weapon craft, weapon craft Enthusiast to give me a couple extra bodies. So, um, you know, it works really, really good for that. And then, of course, you know, if you just want to put the two counters on it, you end up with a three mana two three, which isn't horrible, but isn't all isn't the greatest either. Now, one of the um, the my favorite black three mana spells here is um, Isaret. Oh, let me let me see if I can say it. Isareth? Isareth? The Awakener. Uh, Israeth? Isra I think it's Israeth. I think it's Israeth the Awakener. I'm going to pronounce it as Israeth. Anyway, uh, three mana, double black and a colorless here. Israeth the Awakener. Um, when it attacks, you can pay X. And when you do, return target creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to... Uh, the battlefield with a corpse counter on it. If that creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Uh, and that's kind of the only reason for the corpse counter, so that you just know that if this one leaves, it must be exiled. Uh, and then 
Rona, discipline, uh, disciple of Gix. Uh, discipline. Rona, disciple of Gix is uh, another really good three mana card. Now it's only a three mana two two, which isn't the greatest thing in the world. But at the beginning of your upkeep, or sorry, um, <laughs> beginning of your upkeep, when it enters the battlefield, you can exile the top card of your library. You may exile. Um, enters the battlefield, you may exile target historic card from your graveyard, um, and then, I, I totally read that wrong, and then you may cast non-land cards exiled with uh, Rona. Now, you can pay four and tap it and exile the top card of your library. That's that's the part I was, I was trying to read. So, um, the way this is worded, it doesn't have to be the same Rona on the battlefield. So you can play one Rona, it gets removed, and then you can play another Rona, and then uh, you can play cards that was exiled with the first Rona, and that's really, really strange compared to a lot of cards that we've used. Uh, and it kind of works a lot like the new Karn, where if one Karn exiles, it puts it with that silver counter, and then the next Karn can actually downtake and get those cards back. This is not something that we've seen a lot of in the past. Um, you know, in the past, we, like, use a uh, big Karn, for example. You know, if, if that Karn exiled something, then, you know, it was removed, and those things just stayed in exile, and you wouldn't be able to get them back with a future Karn. It would have to start exiling new cards. So, um, you know, that's... Um, that, that's kind of new, and I, I do like the fact that they're using that mechanic. We only have two Ronas, but um, I do like the card, and I think she's actually really, really good. Now, here comes the bombs. Okay, so for four mana, we've got Demon of Catastrophes, where we, as an additional cost to cast the spell, we have to sacrifice a creature, but we get a 6-6 six, six with Flample. I love Flying and Trample. I think it is absolutely terrific. And more than that, I probably just like saying it, right? Um, Rite of Bell's Lock here, a saga that we're going to be playing. Now, this is, um, you know, just a really good saga as long as we can sacrifice something. So, let's read this. On entering the battlefield, you're going to put the first lore counter on it. And the same for the next turn after your draw step, you'll put the second. Now, both of those lore counters are going to give you two zero one black cleric creature token. So they're just they're just priest praying to bells a lot bells and lot. And then when you get the third counter uh, lore counter on your saga here, create a six six black demon creature token with flying. Trample and at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice another creature. If you can't, this creature deals six damage to you. So we may end up with multiples of these on the battlefield. If we do, we're really going to need something like a reassembling skeleton or weapon craft enthusiast just to make sure that we're not losing to our own volatility here. Now, uh, we do have a couple copies of Roska's Contempt to help clean the board up. And then we have one single copy of Torgar because, again, we're willing to sacrifice our creatures to throw down really big dudes. And Torgar is a really big dude so um that's the game plan that's uh that's what we're going to be trying to do here and then in the sideboard we've got a few ways to help protect that now um we're going to start off with just saying hey look we can just unsummon some things and this may actually be one of those uh, cases where we might actually want to bring unsummon in against decks that have a lot of removal um, because they may be able to remove our little things and then just kind of chump block our 6-6 six, six flyer, which is kind of hard to do with Flample, but, you know, it, it could happen. It could happen. Um, so we do have to worry about our demon dealing six points of damage to us. So worst case scenario, we just unsummon it or something. But unsummoning our opponent's creatures is also very important. Um, just the time walk alone, one mana. Okay, you turn five, uh, the Scarab God. I'm going to unsummon that. You can try again next turn. Um, we do have four copies of Negate and one River's Rebuke, and that kind of makes up the bulk of the blue spells there. We've got a lot of blue mana, not you know an overwhelmingly amount of uh, you know blue spells, but a lot of times you're going to want that Negate pretty early in the game. So I definitely understand the norm, the number of blue that we have. I do think it might be just a little bit too much though. Um, as the deck is very, very black. Uh, hopefully we won't have that in, in any of our games here. Now, a couple copies of Golden Demise, or three copies of Golden Demise here. Um, this is a, you know, a spell that doesn't get a ton of play, but it's actually really well placed in the meta right now. Uh, you get double black and a, and a colorless. You have a sorcery spell with a sin. So it'll check for a sin, and then the second part will go off. Um, all creatures get... Plus two, or neg two, neg two until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, instead only creatures your opponents control get neg two, neg two until end of turn. So you get to keep all of your dudes. They lose all of their guys, and <laughs> Bob's your uncle. You win. Um, 
Crook of Condemnation. Really good, really good spell when you need to keep the graveyards clean. It's a great way to fight against the Scarab God, things like that. And then, of course, Helm of the Host. Um, this card's really cool. We've got a lot of uh, cards that we wouldn't mind making copies of. Heaven forbid we make start making copies of our demons and things like that. Um, things could get out of hand very, very quickly. So I am interested in playing this Helm of the Host. Um, hopefully Justin's here. I'm going to switch back over. We're going to get chat up. So... Um, the updated deck, is, updated deck is more streamlined. What? Don't tell me I've got the wrong deck from you two. You just sent this one. You just sent this one. I, oh my goodness. What? You can't... Oh, I can put stuff. Uh, you did was add the Scarab God and took out the Rona and a few... Th when did you make the deck? Like, I just got this list. Oh, you rushed it? Oh, you sent it to me on Facebook. I pulled from Patreon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, alright. Well, so you took Rona out and put two of the Scarab Gods in? Is that what you did? You took two Ronas out and you put in two of the Scarab God. We can make that happen. We can make that happen. Bam. Oh, you sent me the wrong one on Patreon? Okay. Um, so that's what we did. Alright, we'll take the two Ronas out. We'll run two copies of the Scarab Guide. And, uh... <laughs> right, my, my, my brain's gonna fry. Uh, um... Well, and did you? Where'd you send it? Did you post it to the link? You know that said, you know, put your decks here, right? Right. All right. So we're gonna run it like this, Justin. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. If you do, give it that thumbs up. We're we're gonna jump into this before you guys. Oh no! I'm playing with Copycat. I don't want to play with Copycat. We're done with Copycat. Sorry, Rush. We're done with Copycat. Oh no! Maverick took my game. All right. All right, here we go. Oh, hey, Zach Dillo and Jizza is gone. Here's your chance. <laughs> Barry setting you up. Here you go. Here you go. Um, still fun. I bet it is. I bet it is is still a like a very fun deck. Let's uh let's fix this. Fix this little white white text there um we've got fatal push we've got a harpy so we've got a little bit of control we've got I, i'll keep this it doesn't look like really really bad barry thank you so much sir i appreciate it you guys are are awesome gabriel you back you're gonna watch your dad's deck here you think your dad's deck is as good as yours like so i assume you guys have this deck in paper at home so um do you play your deck versus uh, versus this one? And do you normally crush him, or does he beat you? Like, what what's the what's the the worst thing that he can do to you in this deck? Oh no, we are in trouble. Well, at least we got a one drop there that we can play. I mean, if he goes Glint uh, S Crane, we'll just kill it. Um, Sacking it already. This is this one's just an MTGO deck. Okay, all right. I thought you said you uh, had had some fun with this at uh, FNM and stuff. Well, you guys are awesome. I promise you, like you guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for all the things you guys do for us. Um, have. Where are the notifications? Like, that should have taken him down. Like, why isn't it working? Stream boss. Trying to refresh it. It's not working. Uh... 
Oh no. I've killed the stream boss. I was trying to make sure that it refreshed and I think I've killed the stream boss. Um, we're going to attack here. And then I'm going to play the Ravenous Harpy. Just because I don't think he's going to have a lot of um, spells for me to be killing with, so... If you can't be stream boss, no one can. I, I, I don't know what happened there. Stream boss is having a hard time loading, like... It just doesn't want your face up there. It should be, though. Like, you should be stream boss right now, Zax. You should be stream boss right now. I see your face. It's up there. Poopy with the mad science. Um, we need some way to deal with this. We don't have a way to deal with it, so this is going to be problematic. So, I could technically sacrifice this for two counters and get in three points of damage instead of two next turn if I don't draw something else to play. It's putting more of my eggs in one basket. I'll do it. I mean, just because Sparring Construct's actually going to give me a plus 1-1 one, one counter, and then... Um, and then, you know, we get the plus 1-1 one, one counter from the ability itself, so... Um, we get to start getting in for 3. 3 a turn's not bad. I mean, it's um, Delver of Secrets. So... I just don't understand why the alerts didn't come over. Like, I reloaded the jar, I reloaded the alerts. Okay, uh, blink of an eye, he's just going to blink it. That cost me, that hurt me right there, fellas. That hurt me. And he got to use, like, uh, the draw card ability on it. I mean, he still has uh, seven cards in hand. I'm looking for something much meaner here. So we'll go with Israeth, the Awakener. And now we can start swinging with Israeth, getting a plus one, one counter. Um, or, like, just paying one mana get our sparring construct back and then we pay another mana and um, sacrifice it and like we just get this weird little loop going of just like craziness and um, that seems like that'll be a lot of fun so um. right like for some reason Zach's like I don't know what it is 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 your stuff hidden? Like, do you have uh, information on your YouTube page or whatever, like, hi hidden? Like, you don't want people to see, like, your inform Like, there's, there's an option somewhere where you can hide your YouTube information. And if you do, then the stream app, the, the app won't pick you up. Um, so, I'm very sorry. Like, you might want to look, look and see if that might be the case. Um... Why not preserving revolt for Psy? Um, trying to push damage before he just goes ham. Um, next turn we can like just do this every single turn. Like we, we will have revolt. Right? It does pick you up there. It does. Alright. Let's see what I can do. I doubt I can do anything, but... Okay, so, I mean, he just plays another Renegade map. He's a little bit hurt on mana. He's got ten cards in hand. Um, yeah. Let's see what happens. I'll go to the Streamlabs dashboard. We'll see what we can do. Hopefully, I'll be able to make something work here, and uh, but I don't know. Um, 
definitely going to do this. And then we can... Attack. Pay the one blue. Say yes. We're going to bring back our sparring, sparring construct. Oh, we can't do it every turn because now if it leaves the battlefield, it's just gone. That is correct. My bad. That's why. That's why we can't do it. Okay. So now we know why it's got a corpse counter on it because like people would do stupid stuff like this over and over and over again. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. I forgot about that little line of text. You guys got me on that one. Um... Poopy says, my science is eternal. Don't even worry about it. He's just gonna... He, he said that, you know, if you even if you would've took it, Zax, it's over. <laughs> Poopy, why pay 10 to heal 4? Because he's a madman. Oh, I should have sacked that. I should have sacked it. Or not. What is going on here? Why isn't my alert box going off? Did you guys destroy Stream Boss? Destroyed stream boss. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me see if I can go to the dashboard here. We'll see what we can do. I don't know what's going on. I tell you what, you guys really test the system. Alright, so the alert box. There's a new version of Media Share available with more advanced controls. Instead of being in your alert box, it is in a separate widget with more advanced controls and modern tools. Uh, okay, so I need to go download a new alert box apparently called Media Share, where you guys can donate stuff, donate money, and then have stuff shared. I'll have to look into this. You guys might have some options available to you. What is this prying blade? What is this? What is our opponent doing? We're just going to push the ornithopter. We don't have a lot else going on, so... Yeah, pushing the ornithopter seems really good to me. So now that she's attacked, we sack her with the ability on the stack, pay three mana, get her back. <laughs> that might be possible. You could probably do that. Um, yeah, we'll pay zero and get back our nothing. All right. Oh, man, she would be super good. Like, maybe they could have made a much better card by not putting, putting that in there. Um, the jar looks like it's got some new effects on it, too. Gee. Streamlabs. I'm gonna have to do some updating here. Yeah. Wow, did everything just come through at once? There we go. Alright. Everything just came through at once. Okay. I I don't know. I don't know, guys. I mean, our opponent hasn't absolutely killed us yet. I mean, he's drawing a bunch of cards. He's playing a bunch of things. Um, kind of going to wait for him to paradoxical outcome or try to, like, do something with this ornithopter. Um, I mean, if he goes to equip the ornithopter, we're definitely going to do stuff, so. You apologize if we are distracting from your deck. Uh, you really should be the focus here. Yeah, sorry, Justin. I I am. I'm I'm trying to figure out what's going on over here with the stream. Um, did get that fixed though. Um, I, I still got to turn those like diamonds and stuff into um, uh, 
we'll just kill this. I mean, it's one less card he's going to draw, and he doesn't get to replay it. I mean, he's got 10 cards in hand, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to look into Streamlabs and see what's going on over there. Um, but, again, all of you guys, thank you so much. Yeah. You totally haven't been paying attention to the game. You're just here watching and loving it. Um, be good and slaughter all challenger eternal stream buff. <laughs> well, uh, all right. So he replays the fountain. What else does he replay? Renegade map. Okay. He's still taking four a turn here. And we could easily draw something devastating. That's it. But we, we're going to do it anyway. So how silly can we get? How much damage can we get in this turn? Alright, so we go... Sacrifice the skeleton. Now we've got him on a two-turn clock. I'm going to say no. Now, I can maximize the usage of my mana here by... I think I will. I think I'll just do it. Uh, I'm going to return Reassembling Skeleton from the Graveyard to the Battlefield tapped. And then we're just going to pass. Like, the skeleton itself is, is actually really good. Just coming back to the battlefield tap, you can do this at any time. These paradoxical outcome decks, though, woof. I mean, he's got seven cards, but I mean, he's already went through a couple paradoxicals. We might get there. Right, yeah, don't bring it don't bring it back with his wrath and you won't uh Jora's familiar. Jora's familiar. Historical spell costs one less to cast. He's trying to go off. I mean, he could cast memory here. I don't think he wants to, but he could. Right? <clears throat> yeah, like, the, the reassembling skeleton is actually really, really cool. Another paradoxical outcome. He's like, I want to be able to recast all of these things, but if he doesn't have old girl, he was talking about um, his Ray F the Awakening. She doesn't look very old, but I'm sure there's some lore behind her. She's like a necromancer. That magic doesn't come easy. Right? Like, this whole deck's been a little bit weird. He's got a lot of, like, one mana, um, you know, artifacts and things, and then he's got this Jorah's Familiar, so he can just, like, play a whole bunch. But, honestly, like, unless you have some non-artifact historic spell that you're trying to cast... I don't think that you want Doors Familiar. I think you would just probably rather have the uh, the Construct. I mean, it's three mana, so... Yeah. Gabriel, you have a good night, buddy. Bedtime? Well, we'll take care, sir. I, I hope you enjoy, and um, the replay will be up so you can watch it later, buddy. All right, we got there! Yay! Got to get him back on school time. Oh man, mine mine has gotten to the point where he's staying up to like eleven o'clock every night. And yeah, his mom wants to go to bed before that, so I think negate is like the best thing you can do here. 
he's got some creatures, but I'm not overwhelmingly worried about those creatures. I, mean, I could probably keep a fatal push up, like keep fatal push instead of a Ross. I don't know. And I'm gonna get rid of I'm gonna get rid of one Aether Swoop. And we're gonna run it like this. Um I don't think we need Crook. River's Rebuke's probably really good. A I'll take out one uh, I was gonna say I'll take out one Rite of Bells and a lot and bring in uh, a River's Rebuke. Yeah. Uh, so you have until September, but this is your chill year, so you're all good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we can start with our Memorial to Genius. Yeah, I'll keep this. This isn't horrible. And we can disrupt his uh, hand on turn two here with uh, Kite Sail Freebooter. Take like an Inspiring Statuary or something, make him use a Bounce Spell to remove it. And then he has to cast it, and then we take whatever else he wanted to cast after that. Like, those may be some lines of play we can, we can get away with. Ooh. Yeah, I think I want to get... Like, I could have went Construct right here. And then we could have, like, started to get aggressive with Construct into Freebooter and uh, Harpy or the Enthusiast. Um, like, we could have had some really good plays there. Like, just having the Construct. And it's probably much more aggressive. Um, but I really want to get that blue mana down. So that I have the option to hold up negate if freebooter just gets taken out by a metallic rebuke are we okay with that I think we are oh man look at that punished punished for not playing all right whatever fountain of renewal seems like something really some really good tech um, oh yes Absolutely. Um, I don't think these decks will actually work because we're losing losing Aetherflux Reservoir and stuff like that. So, yeah. Senior year in high school was your chill year. Um, you felt like uh, you was king of the school. Yeah, but you wasn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's dismiss all these. We'll hit. All right. So, what do we want here? Inspiring Statuary, of course. And then he's got, let's get rid of Commit, Memory. So he's got Commit to Memory, Island, Ornithopter, and Inventor's Fair. Looks good. I mean, just getting rid of of his um, his creature that, or I mean his uh, artifact that uh, lets him cast everything for like just much cheaper is going to be really good for us. And we do have to like start getting enough damage in that we can beat the, the fountains, but... We can beat the fountains. We can beat the fountains. Alright, so he played Island. And he played a fountain, which was his draw. So... I'm going to play Island. Construct. And the main reason I'm doing this is because I want to leave up my, um, my negate and my um, Fetty Pool action here. So, that that's the main reason here. I just, want, I just want to have, you know, that turn four up. Your high school was very click-oriented. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think all high schools are click oriented like that's high school like, everybody everybody has their click and that click has its problems with this click and this click has its problem like it yeah yeah high school's clicky it's clicky all right so we played the inventor fair inventor's fair Ooh, is he going to bounce no way i'm countering it i'm countering it like if he needs it back that much so he's got Ornithopter something. More land. Fine. I'm just going to Harpy. We'll attack. That's, um... Uh, so far, so good here. 
that's the nerd click. Is there a magic click? Yeah, that's the nerd click, yeah. Hey. I don't mind being a nerd. I actually had I actually thought about that being a thing, you know. What's up nerds? Because I really don't mind it. I, I whatever, call me a nerd. What, I'm a nerd because I can do math when I choose to? Whatever. Woo! Got that. Got that ornithopter in there. He's gonna start stopping some damage. Uh oh. Ornithopter. Orno ornithopter ain't playing around, boys. Well. That's a thing. That is a thing. So, we could do the sack thing again. <clears throat> I think I'm going to. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Alright, so we no longer... Well, he has no cards left in hand. So we might as well just jump into the uh, attack step here and... Start wrecking face. Um, we're technically only doing two damage per turn right now because um, we're... Oh no, we're only doing one per turn because we have these fountains of renewals that we have to deal with. Yeah, those are things. Those are things. Um, the nerd click is the best click. Once you accept that normies, muggles, whatever, will think you're weird and you stop caring that they do, life's a lot more fun. I'm with Barry on this one. I... Um, I also think that you know the nerd click is uh, is the best one. Like not just because I want to agree with Barry, he's just normally pretty smart and he's worth agreeing with. Um, but yeah, I, um, I I I like it. Like if you think people look bad at you, like it's, let's say you're somebody that's young and you're playing Magic, and, like you're like I, I don't really want my friends at school to know like I really like this this board game or this card game or even if you play something like Dungeons and Dragons. Wow, he had to point it here? Awesome. Um, even if you play something like Dungeons and Dragons, whatever, and you think people are going to think weird of you, wait till you get out of high school. Wait till you get out of junior high or something like that when no one really cares what your pastime is. Like, if you want to go have some fun with something, then just do it. Um, no one's going to say anything to you. Like, as an adult, those things, those little things just don't matter anymore. Like, who thinks what, or like, it just doesn't matter. Um, I have worked in some companies that were just full of uh, a bunch of, like, young people that had just gotten out of high school and stuff like that. And sometimes you'll work in areas that are really clicky like that, and that's usually only if there's a lot of young people there, and, and things still kind of feel like high school. Um, but as soon as you start getting further out into, you know, the into your career and you start running into, you know, older people and and people that have done things or, or whatever, you'll start to realize that a lot of the things you used to think mattered just really didn't. So um, if you're still, you know, in one of those clicky spots like at work and it's just just because you're working around a lot of young people um, and that's just not like a thing. I'm not just saying, you know, hey, you know, young people are like clicks. No, it's just it takes you a little time to get out of that that high school mentality, you know. So, yeah, but, but once you're an adult, like things things like that don't matter. It just really, really doesn't matter anymore. Um, he's sacking all of his fountains here. You and science, poopy. All right, poopy the science man. I was going to try to do that in a Bill, 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 Bill Nye, the science guy. I was going to try to do it something like that, but I, I, I just didn't have it. Didn't know how to do it. Um, this is definitely a weapon craft enthusiast type of game. I'm definitely going to make a bunch of little dudes. Some syrupers. And we're not going to get overly aggressive here. 
he got rid of some of his things. We're going to just maintain this uh, this negate that I have going on and see what he has to cast. I mean, hopefully he's going to try to cast something huge. And if he does, we'll just negate it and drop down our Torgar. And his life total will be 10. Um, so all of that life that he's gained just will not matter. He's equipping! Well, opponent. Sparring construct. So if I go one blue here and I go sparring construct, right? And then I go one, two, three. Cast one, two. Sparring Constructs ability goes on. On this dude. Right? We'll do that. And now we're going to pick our opponent. We'll make him lose half of his life. About 11 points worth. Right? And. I will attack. I know, I'm being brave. I'm being so brave. Right, I didn't think he was blocking anyway. So, now we're, like, just holding up negate. Um, there's not a whole lot he can do to us, I don't think. Not with the negate held up. So, kind of end of the line for this guy. Aiden, I didn't even see you slip in, man. I'm sorry. Uh, tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during because it return all tap creatures. No. If that is your plan, I don't like it. I would much rather you lose this George Familiar trying to block Torgar. Oh no, he, ha he does have a sigh. But now he's out of cards. Yes. Um, so if we go one, one, two, three, plus we have two, three open to, um, for sacks. Sure, sure, this seems okay. Alright, here we go. Uh, we'll let him go to blocks, um, and then I'm just probably going to eat anything he blocks. Um, so, like, if he wants to block here, then we're just going to... Uh... Okay, so he is going to block that. Well, that's fine. I'll block there. I am going to... eat the Kite Cell Freebooter. We'll do four points of damage to him. We will kill um, Sai, the Master Athopterist. Play our Ravenous Harpy to give us another flyer. Um, also another way to split damage. So now he's got lethal on uh, multiple fronts. He has to block this to stop lethal. And he has to block both of our flyers to stop lethal. Um, pretty cool. Uh, at least our opponent didn't scoop on us. We actually got to play that round, you know. We got to actually, like, play magic there. Um, it was pretty good. So, Justin, I like the deck, man. The, the deck's pretty sweet. I mean, um, damage cards are still playable in EDH. Eh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. Didn't get to see the big demons. No, we didn't get to see no rights of Bells and Lock popping out. No, no big demons. 
Um, I don't know. I mean, we had Torgar down. He's not a demon, but we had Torgar. It's pretty cool. Like, the fact that the deck won without the really big bombs is still pretty cool. Like, that that's always a sign of a, 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 a just a well-constructed deck. You know, when all the little pieces together without the, the finisher can still, like, get victories, can get those incremental points of damages in. Um, yeah, like, that's, that's always really sweet. So, um... Weaponcraft enthusiast, I bet that you actually really like this uh, this card in your deck. Like this this card's really really good. Like in any go wide strategy, any way that you have, like with Rite of Bells and like this just makes sense. So I really like uh, Weaponcraft enthusiast here. Um, I also think that it you know this works as a perfect turn three to curve you into your Demon of Catastrophes. So again, you know I'm I'm a big fan here. And then if you're against like a Goblin Chain Whirler deck, you just put the Woman One Counters on it and be like, look, you're going to have to burn this. So, yeah. Um, decks, sounds like what I said about your deck. Exactly. When the main theme doesn't work, then you need that backup plan. And, and sometimes it's actually really important to know that the backup plan works. So, um, yeah. Um, Justin, Poopy Fatty asks, uh, which do you prefer, Justin? Rona or the Scarab God? TSG, do you, which which is your favorite there? Right, Zax's Mill Deck, Encore. I, you know, I've I've got his Mill Deck up right here. Um, we are going to have an Encore of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it again because it was actually a really cool way to mill. Um, it's exactly what I was expecting from mill. Was that you would you would um, we're we're gonna get an Encore. We're gonna we're gonna play that. I'm I'm gonna play it for Zax. Um, also, um, I, I want to do another thing this month because we actually have a couple seats open and everything. I was Since we didn't have a ton of decks, I actually put them off to the end of the month. But I'm going to go ahead and start taking the August decks for the Patreon games um, immediately. So I'll put a post up uh, some point tomorrow. I'll put a post up for you, uh, you patrons. Uh, to go ahead and uh, you know post your August decks. Uh, if you do sign up for Patreon from you know today forward, you won't have a deck until next month. Like um, the way Patreon bills is, it's billing people right now for July, and then it'll bill you at the first of um, September for August, that sort of thing. So, um, but for the patrons, uh, for for the patrons, those of you that are. Uh, patrons, I'm going to be uh, running those decks, you know, throughout the month this time instead of waiting. Like last month, I had a whole big lot of them that I needed to, you know, run out at once, and then we had the, you know, these five or six here at the end that we needed to run out. Um, but uh, this month, like we're, we're kind of we're kind of ahead. We don't have too many. We haven't like flooded everyone with patron decks and stuff like that. So go ahead and start posting those as you build them, and I'll try to get them out, you know, the week that you post them. Um, but um, Zaxadillo, uh, who is uh, you know one of our moderators, Jareth Miles, moderator, and for the horde, I'll contact him and make sure that he knows, or we'll catch him. Um, but uh, you guys, go ahead and make a deck. Uh, I want to run. Um, I want to run some moderators decks. We may just have a night of it where I pull up all three of my moderators decks and we go. You know, what do the moderators play? You know, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Um, nah, Zach Dillo didn't rush. He he um, he um, he made a mill deck, and then the, the Sunday it just kind of kind of went out. Jareth Miles, you're a moderator. You Zach Dillo, and for the horde um, this month, I would like to play one of your decks. Uh, you guys are always you know in chat. You're always you know making sure that no one's like being too uh, you know out of place in chat. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys um, you know post decks, and um, I'll I'll play moderators decks at some point this uh, this month. So um, so we lost Crewfix. He popped in uh, here a while back. He uh, he said that he hasn't been playing much Magic lately, um, and you know I haven't seen Crewfix in, in quite some time. He did pop in though, uh, but yeah, um, I uh, have removed him from the moderator list just because like. We never see him, and I don't want to leave moderator privileges out there. So, yeah. Um, our three mods are Zax, Jareth Miles, and For the Horde. Um, other than that, we've uh, we've got a bunch more Patreon decks that will be coming throughout the month. We've got some moderator decks. I'm sure these guys will get to building. Um, uh, Zax, like, 
replaying your mill deck is not going to count, so go ahead and make another deck or whatever type of depression you like to put into cardboard form, whatever. Either way, uh, guys, I've had a lot of fun playing the uh, the, the patron decks tonight, uh, and like honestly, this one was very mean, and we never seen anything over a three drop. Like we didn't get to write some bells a lot. We didn't get to demon of catastrophes. Um, we only paid two mana for Torgar. Um, so, yeah. Nothing over a three drop, and we just beat face, so. Oh, I would love to see that. Zaxadillo tries aggro. I would like to see that. What color would you be? Right? What color would you play? If you had to sit down and actually kill someone with damage... And you wanted to do it before turn five. What colors would you be in, Zax? I'm curious. Um, either way, Justin Clay, man, I don't really have a lot of feedback for you. The deck looks like really well put together. You don't, you didn't go overboard with, oh, this does a thing, so I want four of it in the deck. No, you didn't do that, and that's really, really cool. Um, and then the things that you do have four ofs do really good things. Like the sparring construct, we're getting two plus one one counters when you, you know, sack a ravenous harpy. That's terrific. So, yeah. Um, with your last few months of stress, this was a perfect evening. Well, man, I'm I am glad that you had some fun, Barry. I uh, again, I appreciate everything that all of you have done. Um, the amount of support that you guys have given tonight, it, it's absolutely, it's mind-blowing. I try to just move past it because you guys, um, you know, blow me away with uh, the donations and things. Like, it's, it's, uh, you guys are staggering. Well, it wasn't just Barry. Barry did some work in there, but, I mean, Poopy Fatty and Jizza and uh, Zach Zadillo, like, it doesn't matter how much you give, just the fact that, you know, you were you cared enough about the entertainment you're getting to, to actually give something that you've worked hard and earned um, so like um, I appreciate that guys that 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 means a lot it really really does either way I'm gonna be done for the night we're coming up on uh, 12 o'clock I had a lot of fun playing these decks I hope you had a lot of fun watching them and we'll see you next time here on sideboard MTG crank up the music for a little bit. We'll let you listen to this for a sec. It's a good song. Good old Ninja Turtles. Rush says, from now on, Facebook and Patreon messages should be treated the same. I have spoken. Fair enough, Rush. I will... I will, uh... I will do my best. I tell you what, before I run your deck for now on, I will message you and be like, yo, send me the latest link now. Right? Take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs>